good afternoon. What I'm trying to do in this video is work out a way that I can use this uh, carbon felt that I bought. And uh, as we learned in a, in a video about a week ago, uh, we can use this carbon felt as the separator and, and just put uh, your current collectors on either side of it. And that opens the door to uh, embedding all your active materials inside uh, the felt here. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm working on a way to to put the ideal amount of uh, binder in a, in a solution of uh, titanium dioxide and uh, graphite in, with distilled water that I'm mixing there. And uh, <coughs> the, the idea is to uh, create what Robert Murray Smith uh, in his uh, strange battery uh, created and uh, and that is a a mixture of materials here in the felt that creates thousands of tiny batteries uh, in the felt and uh, he, get, he got incredible uh, amount of power out of that so that's what I'm trying to uh, to recreate now one of the problems you have with using binders is it's hard to know exactly what the right amount of binder is to put in uh, and it's really easy to overdo it and in this case I've got uh, some distilled water with some white glue dissolved in it so it's about 20 percent white glue and um, uh, what I'm going to do is just take a dropper here and I'm going to slowly drop a drop at a time down into the <clears throat> into my uh, stirring mix right here and anyway uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of time turn the stirrer off and at the point where it doesn't settle out anymore because the titanium dioxide and the graphite are both insoluble in water so you know without any binder in there it will just settle out so by adding a little bit of binder at a time and I can just turn it off and, and at the point where it stops settling out fast I know I've got enough binder in there that will keep it in suspension and at that point I can soak this piece of uh, felt in that and it'll coat all the all the fibers in there easily and I'll let that dry and then I, and then I'll uh, dip it in a borax solution to turn the the white glue into a thin film and that'll bind all my uh, titanium dioxide and graphite uh, mix to the to the felt and then I'll let that dry and, and I can do that several times and build up layers in there until I eventually uh, get a lot of uh, uh, little batteries in here and hopefully still have enough space where air can move through and to uh, feed the air to them that they need so uh, anyway that's the goal so I haven't put any in there yet but uh, basically you just take a take a little like this and, and drop a few drops down in there and then let it mix and then I'll turn it off and uh, see if, if that settles out how fast it settles out and then uh, I'll keep doing that until uh, I, I get the the right amount in there that it keeps it in suspension so okay I'm back uh, the, now this is after uh, after 12 milliliters of the uh, diluted uh, white glue solution has been added and you can see the spots that are on top of the of my uh, graphite titanium solution here I think okay I'm back again now I'm up to uh, 18 milliliters of uh, white glue solution in my mix and uh, as you can see I've turned up the stirring speed on it and uh, I'm going to turn it off right now and now you can see that the black spots that were floating around on it are now gone uh, I had it it was stirring too slow so I cranked up the stirring speed and I'm getting a, a lot uh, better mix now so and uh, it looks like I'm just about there I think I'm going to put two more milliliters in and mix it and then and then test it after that but uh, okay I'm back again here I've got 20 mils of my white glue in there 
and it's uh, been mixed in a while and it's, it should be uh, ready to go and uh, it's staying in solution pretty well so I'm going to uh, now just I've cut the uh, carbon felt into three pieces I'm going to dip all three of them in there and then take them out in the sun let them dry and then I'll come back and uh, and uh, dip them in uh, the borax solution to, to solidify the, the thin film and then I'll let that dry and then I'll test one of them and I'll dip the other two and uh, same thing set them out to dry and uh, and then uh, when those are done I'll, I'll bring them back in and I'll test the second one with two coats and I'll have the, and I'll do the third for the third coat on the, on the last one and let it go through the process again and then we'll test that one we'll see which one work, uh, works best one coat two coats or three coats all right whoops I might as well dip them oh I'm here to show you piece of cake stick it down in there drain out the excess Put it on the wax paper. Alrighty. I'll be back up with an update later. Alright, I'm back after drying the, the fell in the sun this afternoon, and uh, they dried up uh, pretty well, feel dry to the touch, and they're still flexible. You can see that uh, even though I flipped them, there's, there's the excess still drained out on the uh, wax paper, but they look like they're coated fairly well. There's some uneven areas, but uh, the edges are coated, both sides are coated, so... Um, they're probably still damp on the inside a little bit maybe but I'm going to go ahead and uh, dip them in uh, some borax solution here and then we'll uh, see how that goes bubbles coming out in There we have that, and uh, I'm going to show you the what I'm going to put in there with the as the other active material. There. And this is the zinc chloride. I, I like this little uh, uh, crystal uh, container I picked up at the thrift store. Uh, it's, I used it for the uh, the carbonization of the zinc chloride, and uh, I didn't want to waste the, that. Uh, gooey carbon that I made uh, but I uh, so I took a little more zinc chloride and thinned it down some and uh, and then uh, I put it on a hot plate again and, uh, and mixed it around and then um, pulled out the, the, the heavy clumpy carbon just left the, the liquid in there and uh, that turned out to be uh, it's still conductive it's, it's about 600 ohms so but uh, anyway, so I'm going to use that uh, in this first test right here so I don't waste this stuff. And okay, I took the uh, carbonized glucose and zinc chloride mix, and I mixed a couple of tablespoons of uh, liquid sunflower lecithin with that and put it on the uh, uh, magnetic stirrer for about 20 minutes. And... Uh, and then I took that and put it in the sonicator for about 15 minutes and uh, so now we have some another form of uh, microsphere my silly microspheres in here and uh, it came out as a it came out as a, a thin gel and I think it's thin enough that it'll still penetrate these uh, 
pieces of uh, carbon cell here that we've dipped <coughs> and uh, so we're ready to go uh, as soon as we get the stuff dry so basically what we're creating here is a uh, zinc carbon uh, battery like a D cell we have a, a zinc uh, current collector underneath of it and we had if, and some uh, mag manganese dioxide in it we would have the same components as a as a D cell we're just switching out the manganese dioxide for titanium dioxide and making it rechargeable or self charging so uh, anyway so this is going to be interesting to see uh, see how well this works Okay, getting back to uh, Robert Murray Smith's uh, strange uh, battery video. Um, actually, I think there's two videos on that uh, subject. Uh, he says that uh, <coughs> the uh, little batteries uh, inside the one cell there are a mixture of uh, fat, uh, sugar, and salt, and which is exactly what we've got right here with the... Uh, the lecithin and the sunflower oil, there's our fat, and uh, the salt is the uh, zinc chloride. That's a that's a salt, and uh, and then uh, the carbon is made from uh, glucose sugar. So uh, we've actually got all the the ingredients there for the uh, for the strange battery in this component of the of the cell that we're going to build. So I just thought I'd add that to it. I'm back. I was just thinking, if you wanted to get really accurate with this method of uh, putting in your uh, binder, you could use a hydrometer and check the specific gravity of it uh, after each uh, time you put it in there, and 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 then when you see the the that peak, uh, then you would know that you've got as max amount of uh, the materials in suspension as you can get. So uh, that might be a way to, in, in, to improve this a little bit more, but uh, you can just eyeball it uh, and go by feel. Uh, that's what I'm doing, and uh, and it works pretty good. This stays in solution for uh, about an hour or so, uh, and so uh, that that's uh, that's pretty good. It could even be, I could take it up and make it stay in solution longer, but I think that's good enough to for it to to do its job. And so I'm going to go with as little binders uh, as I can. All right. Thanks for watching.